Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. Why is the US, while publicly imposing sanctions on Huawei, simultaneously turning a blind eye to China's self-developed 3 nanometers chips? Many may believe that as long as China achieves technological breakthroughs, it can breathe freely, unaffected by foreign countries' stranglehold. However, the reality is far more complex. In the protracted technological war over chips, visible technological breakthroughs are crucial, but invisible standards and ecosystems are the hidden, decisive forces. Today, whether it's your computer or phone, the CPU, GPU, or various operating systems, they all rely heavily on American technology. Data shows that in global chip design, American companies account for 67% of logic devices, 37% of analog devices, and even 72% of the intellectual property and EDA tool markets. Looking at the top 10 global chip design companies in the first quarter of 2025, six are American, with a combined market share of 91%. This isn't a monopoly, but near total control. This dominance is also hidden in chip architecture standards. ARM may not be a familiar name, but the smartphone you hold is almost 100% powered by its technology. ARM CEO Chen Feng once stated that the company already has over 430 licensees, with cumulative chip shipments exceeding 310 billion units, accounting for over half of the global IP market. Of the top 30 semiconductor companies globally, 29 are ARM partners, unable to escape its influence. Imagine everyone using the same standards. Whoever controls them controls the industry's lifeline. Due to US restrictions, ASML's EUV equipment is undersold. Therefore, no matter how much China achieves breakthroughs in 3 nanometers design processes, it will be unable to achieve large-scale production. Although Shanghai Microelectronics has achieved breakthroughs in 28 nanometers, it still lags behind the most advanced 3 nanometers lithography equipment. Without the support of core equipment, 3 nanometers chip development will remain confined to the lab, unlikely to reach the market or be included in consumers' phones. Huawei is widely known as a holdout against US sanctions. Strangely, Huawei has never officially confirmed its technology. Rumors have circulated of 7 nanometers, 5 nanometers, and 3 nanometers processes, but Huawei itself remains silent. International dismantling agencies then dismantled mobile phone chips and claimed to have discovered 5G features. The US was immediately displeased and the global ban wasn't limited to Huawei, but rather all Chinese companies involved in high-end chip manufacturing. How exactly does Huawei manufacture its chips? How did it circumvent the blockade of manufacturing equipment? These questions remain a mystery. However, there is a consensus, as long as China hasn't surpassed the US and doesn't threaten its core interests, the US won't take a one-size-fits-all approach. As long as you use my standards and play my game, I'll leave you a job, that's the reality. In fact, China's domestically developed chips have taken a 20-year detour, starting with security and national defense. Products like Beidar GGCPU, Lungsun, and Shenwei were initially used in satellites, defense, and specialized industries, rarely reaching the civilian market. Unfortunately, even the best hardware isn't accessible to ordinary people, and a lack of ecosystem and software development means it's doomed to failure. What were the pain points? Lungsun's initial promotion struggled because Windows didn't support it, and many basic programs couldn't run. Ultimately, it was just a few slogans, but it didn't make a splash. In recent years, Huawei has sought to emulate the Apple model. For example, the Hongmeng system aims to attract developers while ensuring the proper functioning of more domestic software. Huawei is also promoting its Taishan CPU architecture and Maliang GPU technology in hardware. However, design alone isn't enough, 
as key manufacturing processes haven't been achieved. Apple is a prime example, integrating hardware and software. Through deep optimization of the system and chips, even if the hardware isn't top tier, software can still make up for shortcomings. Huawei, while lacking a solid foundation, hasn't caught up, but it's on the right track. Of course, the deeper battle lies in standards and dominance. Core chip standards, including design tools, EDA, intellectual property, IP, and instruction set architecture, are almost entirely dominated by the United States. Ultimately, the chip industry isn't just about technology, it's about a comprehensive ecosystem. If Huawei's Taishan architecture wants to be adopted by more companies, it must demonstrate compatibility with existing software and the potential for development to earn the trust of manufacturers. Hongmeng also faces the problem of insufficient developer motivation. Currently, Android APKs can be translated, but the efficiency is mediocre. People are accustomed to using Android and Apple, so switching to Hongmeng is, frankly, a bit challenging. Lunson's incompatibility with Windows essentially sealed its fate in the civilian market, a pitfall Huawei must avoid. The system ecosystem issue won't be resolved in a year or two, and the underlying tug-of-war is far more arduous than China imagines. In fact, various experts have clearly articulated the trends in the chip industry. Professor Zhu Shiyao of the University of Science and Technology of China has also stated that 3 nanometers chips haven't been sanctioned, because the core standards are still set by the US, and Chinese companies haven't crossed the US's line. The US will retaliate if there's a threat. Chen Feng stated that arms licensing volume and global IP market share have built an impenetrable defense, demonstrating that the international chip industry doesn't rely on a single country's technological dominance, but rather on who controls standards and ecosystem dominance. Public data also shows that while Chinese chips have made breakthroughs year after year, they still have a long way to go to catch up with top-tier international processes. To be more precise, the current state of China's chip industry is one of gradual technological catching up, while remaining constrained in ecosystem and standards. To fully escape the fate of being strangled, it requires more than just breakthroughs in a single technological node. It requires rebuilding every link and set of rules in the entire industry chain. Manufacturing equipment must catch up, design tools and instruction sets must be independent, and the software ecosystem needs to slowly build up. No one wants to be the victim of rules set by others, but this game will only be decided in the long run. May the chips of the future no longer be governed by other people's rules.